Hi, and welcome to this Fornaf Coffee Break. My name is René Brimmel. I'm a product specialist at Fornaf, and I will be your presenter today. As this Coffee Break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the Coffee Break. Today, we are going to build dynamic text blocks for our Business Central reports. To demonstrate building dynamic text blocks, we'll use the reports from the Fornaf Customizable Report Pack. However, you can build dynamic text blocks in any Fornav report and any extension using the instructions from this coffee break. To demonstrate building dynamic text blocks, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will combine fields with captions. In step three, I will join multiple fields with captions. In step four, I will build an item description. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will be building dynamic text blocks in the Business Central on-premise Docker installation with the Business Central 2021 Wave 1 release. I've installed the 4.5 customizable report pack and I've executed a step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central cloud environment and on all of the previous uh, Business Central and NAV releases. I've also installed the 4.5 designer on my PC. The 4.5 designer can be downloaded from the 4.5 website. To build dynamic text blocks, you will need Fornaf version 6.0 or above. So this is a brand new feature. Often when we design reports, clients will ask us to only show fields and captions when that field has value. This removes cluttering and makes a report easier to read. Of course, we can show and hide controls with the show output property. This works, but it's a bit of a hassle to set up when you have a lot of fields. From Fornaf 6.0, you can use field extensions. And to demonstrate these field extensions, we will go and play with the uh, Fornaf standard reports. I'll just start editing the sales template. And one of the fields that sometimes has a value and sometimes does not is the your reference field. So let's go and set that one up. You will notice that in the field list, I now have a new node, which is called uh, field extensions. And if I expand that, I have all of my fields, so I can grab my your reference field and drag it into my header. Let's make it yellow so we can all see it there. So I will save this. Now, instead of previewing from Fornaf, which works, I'm going to show this from a sales order. And that's because if I print it from a sales order, I have a sales order open and I can actually add some field information, some, uh, uh, some references. So right now for this sales order, I do not have a your reference. So your reference field is empty. And when I print my confirmation, if I preview this, you will notice my uh, your reference field is empty. It's uh, just a blank yellow field. And when I add my reference in my order, some reference, and I print this again, you will notice my field now says your reference, go along space, some reference. So that's the default way the Fornaf field extensions work. Of course, sometimes client wants the uh, your reference in bold and the reference behind it. Um, for that, we have, of course, the good old field caption. So I can grab my field caption for the your reference and make it bold. I can grab my your reference field, put that behind it. And then, of course, I can hide my your reference field, but hiding, showing and hiding fields has always, based on the value, has always been a bit tricky. And for that, we can now also use the field extensions. And to do that, we can find the field extension for your reference and add it to the report and add the function has value to the end of it. Uh, if you use the field extensions has value uh, function, uh, that will return a, a yes or no uh, based on if the field has a value. So that makes it very easy to show and hide fields. So I've added that in the show output of the your reference. Now let's make this orange and save it again. Now let's go back to our sales order, which still has the reference. I can preview this now. Now I have the your reference in bold with the sum reference behind it. 
And then when I delete the sum reference, I would expect the caption to be deleted as well, to be not shown on the report. So let's try that. Delete the reference. Preview the report. You will notice that field extension has value now hides the, uh, the standalone caption as well. So that's another new, uh, another feature of the field extensions. Finally, we notice that when I add a field extension, uh, the fields are separated, separated by colon space uh, by default. That's a default behavior, um, but you can override that if you need to. So let's grab my document date. And make that green. Now I've used the header.fieldextensions.document date. But I can add a join a default, a, 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 an override join variable. And let's say I want to use a dash with two spaces. So I've used that for, uh, for my join and then my field extension I can call with the format function and in the format function I add my join variable and of course you can add um, you don't need to use the, uh, the uh, JavaScript variable for your join you can simply add your join string in here but using variables makes, means uh, it makes these join strings very easy to change and to maintain so I've added that okay uh, let's preview the report now don't need to go all the way to the order because the invoices I have in the system have document dates as well. So you will notice I now have a document date field extension, so I have the document date caption, then I have a dash to join, and then I have the date. Finally, I would like to format the date differently. Uh, we have the, the .NET format feature for uh, normal fields. On a field extension, that uh, we have a separate feature for that. And to demonstrate that, we need to, I will add a new format variable and the value will be the string D because the D string uh, is a date format property. And I will simply add that as a second variable in my function uh, format function call so i can now call the for the format function with the join and the format strings and if i now preview the report and uh, zoom in a little bit you will notice that i have document date with the uh, with the dash instead of the uh, colon and I have Monday, uh, January, January 23, 2023, which is the document date of this particular invoice. So that's the basics of our uh, field extensions. So that's the field extensions give, give us a field with its caption. And now we have them, uh, we can string them together. And to string multiple fields together, uh, depending on if they have a value, we have another feature in for now, which is called CurReport.JoinStrings. And CurReport join strings simply joins a bunch of strings together with a uh, spacer character. So let's have a look at our ForNav report again. And if we scroll all the way down into this ForNav report, this is a ForNav report in ForNav version 6.0 in which we have changed the uh, the default footer and you will notice that in the default footer of a ForNav report we have a join format uh, just like we had earlier and then we call current report join strings with the pipe character and we simply add the phone number email homepage vat registration iban and swift and depending on if they, these are filled or not uh, then they will be displayed at the footer of our report I preview the report. I look at the footer. You will notice I have a phone number, pipe character, homepage, pipe character, etc. etc. And if I want to change this, uh, that's fairly easy. All I need to do is go into my footer. 
And I can change the uh, the join strings character and make that into a hash, for instance. And I can change the join format, uh, which is why we use variables for a join format. Uh, let's use this one and hit OK in preview. have been changed and now we use the hash character as a separator and uh, we use the is character as a uh, uh, format join string. Finally, we can use the join strings for more things than just field extensions. You can use it for uh, joining together any kind of string and it will only join the strings if it has value so it's a very uh, very uh, valuable feature inside for nav so like let's look at this uh, particular example uh, we often are, have people that ask us how do we add uh, specific item properties to a sales invoice line um, well we can do that with the join strings and in this case we will call join strings with a backslash n as a separator and the backslash n inside for nav javascript means a new line so i will add uh, all the item information on a new line so let's go and play with for nav to see what this looks like and of course we will be playing with the lines body right here and in the lines body i have the line description by default but i will delete that because i want to add some item stuff I've added the item table to this report before this uh, this webinar. If you want to know how to add tables to reports, we have done a, uh, a coffee break on that. So you can find that in our list of recorded coffee breaks. For now, I will find my current report join strings and open and add the backslash n as my separator character and then a comma. I start on a new line, but that's not mandatory. You can keep all the stuff on the same line if you want to. I start on a new line because it looks slightly tidier. So let's add the item description. Then once again, a comma. Let's grab the item variant. Not the item variant. I wanted the line variant. So you can add fields from different data items. That's no problem at all. So I can simply grab the line variant. And then I want some stuff with my, uh, with my captions. So for those, I will use my field extensions from the item and from the field extensions. So let's grab the net weight. And finally, I want my country region of origin. So I'll add that and I will close with a closing uh, closing bracket. So what this does is it joins these strings with a, uh, with a new line character as separator. So we'll create new lines for all of these strings. And then we'll add the item description, the line variant code, and the item uh, net weight with caption, and the item country region of origin code also with caption. And of course, this particular cell has been set to can grow, so it can grow based on uh, uh, the information in my cell. And the body has also been set, uh, the body section has also been set to can grow, so it can also grow. So if I now preview my report and use an invoice that I've prepared earlier, you will notice in our uh, in our item description, our line descriptions, we now have Amsterdam lamp, which is the item description. The first one has black, which is the variant code and a net weight. Of the second item has an item description, of course. It has a net weight, but it doesn't have a variant code. Uh, so for now, does not even display a, a blank line for the variant code. It just does not display it. Uh, and it is, and it shows the country region of origin code DK which of course it ignored in the first one. And the last one doesn't have a variant or a region of or country region of ori origin. It just have a net, has a net weight and an item description. So that's a great way to string together multiple, 
multiple uh, fields in a single four and a half text box. So let's recap what we just did. The first thing we did was to use the field extensions. We noticed that when we use a field extension, Fornav automatically prints the caption and the value if the field is not empty. We also noticed that we can control the formatting with Fornav with the format function, and we can check if a field has a value with the has value function. Next, we looked at the curreport.joinString function. We saw that we could use this to string multiple fields together separated by a specified character. Finally, we used the join strings expression to manually build our item information. All of the JavaScript we have shown today can also be found on the JavaScript section of the 4 and guide. So thank you for listening to me so far. I see we don't have any questions at the moment. If you do have any questions, just type them in the question box and I will answer them. For now, I will close this webinar. If you want to know more about 4 please visit 4 where you can also download the 4 and uh, converter and designer. If you want to install Microsoft uh, 4NAV on uh, Business Central Cloud, you can do that from the Microsoft App Source. And if you want to watch more of our Coffee Break videos or other videos about 4NAV, please visit our YouTube channel. If you have any questions after watching this video, uh, please send them to, to support at 4 We will be continuing our 4NAV Coffee Breaks for a list of upcoming and recorded Coffee Breaks. Please visit 4 slash Coffee Break. With that, thank you very much for, what, for watching this uh, coffee break today, and I will speak to you in the, at the next coffee break. Goodbye.